Do you think that's important as a parent to do that? Yeah, yes, I do. My my dad, my mom, they pushed me as kids, as a kid, to do my best. Um, and I've always told Calvin, if if you don't want to play something, if you don't like it, you don't have to to do it. But if you're gonna do it, like do it, give it your all. Um, he is so talented. Um, let's let's talk about your daughter Kelly um, for a little bit here. What's her personality like? How would you describe her? Um, she's loving. She's quiet. She's very athletic. Um, she's very smart. She she's an amazing kid. Um, but she she's she's quiet. Um, She's an amazing young woman. Um, what are her likes and dislikes, do you think? She loves hockey. She loves softball. Um, she loves volleyball. She loves to be with her friends. She loves to, to boat and, and tube and go to Mackinac Island and, and do all of those fun things. Um, Does she seem to enjoy school? I mean, she says she gets bored at school, but I think school comes pretty easy to her. So sometimes I think she gets bored, um, but I think she likes it. She likes being there with her friends. She loves to sing, so she loves to be in the choir. Um, I think she likes it. How often do you communicate with Callie? I uh, talk to her every day. I mean, when she's with me, I, obviously it's multiple times, but when she's not with me, I text her uh, and call her multiple times in a day. Um, and if it's just you and Callie together hanging out, what kind of what kind of stuff do you guys do together? Um, taking her for ice cream. I took her uh, shopping uh, two weeks ago, or maybe it's been longer, three weeks ago, she had a couple of hockey games in Gaylord and just she and I went and it was an amazing day. Um, she played well. Then between games, I took her to Glicks over there and uh, just let her, I let her be her. I uh, let her uh, just try on clothes that uh, she wanted to try on. Um, I think she only ended up getting one or two things, but I, ju I just like to let them be them and spend time with them. And I took her to Tropical Smoothie because the kids just love the smoothies. Um, when it's in town in here, I taken her out to eat when it's just her. I've taken her to Lululemon because she just loves to look around there. Um, I, I, I've taken them to the bookstore downtown, take them to Pangea, take her to Pangea's. Uh, Callie likes to read. So I've, I, I like to take her to bookstores and just let her look around. Um, I've taken her to Target. She loves Target. Um, I just I, when I'm when I'm with each of the kids, I like to do what they want to do. What kind of books does she like? Um, I mean, she's she she jumps around. I don't I, I don't I can't say I know too much about what she's reading. Uh, when it comes to buying something, um, since Jen and I aren't together, I I try to run stuff by her and send pictures and stuff, or have her ask her mom. Um, uh, that did create an issue not too long ago. Um, Callie had told me we were. At... Yeah, but I'm about it, Callie. Okay. Okay. But um, but as far as you know, her selecting books, do you do you try to monitor that the contents? Yeah, I try. I try to monitor, um, or I listen to what she tells me. Um, so she's just an avid reader, all kinds of genres. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you said she likes to sing. What does she like to sing? Um, she, well, she sings in the choir at school. Um, uh, when I'm taking her to school or picking her up, she, uh, we like to play a game where I jump around uh, on the music list or change the station. And there is never a song that she doesn't know the words to. And I try to stump her, but it never works. Um, so she just loves to, to sing everything. Does she also have um, like important friendships outside of she the does. immediate yeah, family? She does. And how do you foster and support those friendships? Um, I mean, it's it's hard. It's different uh, times of the year. She hangs out with uh, the, a lot of people that she's playing that current sport with. Um, 
you know, not a, a ton happens during the week unless they're seeing each other at practice, but weekends when they're playing is when they normally spend most of their time. If it's summertime, they'll have friends over or she gets invited to, to do things. And, you know, I want to know where she is and what she's doing and what her plans are and all the things that a dad should know and do. Um, do you ever just dump her or the kids off at somebody else's house and you don't want to deal with them? No, I've never done that. So if they're doing sleepover type stuff, what what's the reason for that? Um, because they were invited somewhere. Um, and that was that pretty normal even prior to the separation? That was, yeah, very normal before. And it's, it's normal now. Nothing's changed. What would you say is Callie's favorite summer activity? Um... I mean, sports-wise, it's softball. If it's if it's on the boat, she loves to. Um, she loves Mac and Island. We didn't do that much this year. I, Jen took them once. I took them once. Um, but she loves to wakeboard and tube, and and I took them fishing. She like she likes to fish, but pro probably wakeboarding. What would you say is her favorite winter activity? Hockey. The girl. The kids have really gotten into skiing. She loves to ski. Um, but she also, Callie is one that loves her downtime. She loves, that's when she loves to read. She just likes her quiet time. Um, so I try to let her do that too. What's her favorite subject in school, do you think? Probably choir. Let's talk about your daughter, Kelsey. <laughs> All the K names. <laughs> right. um, was that intentional? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it was intentional. It was... Um, how would you describe Kelsey's personality? Uh, she's a jokester. Um, her goal and everything she does is to make people laugh. Um, she's very, uh, she's very passionate. She's, she's the biggest sweetheart in the world. Uh, she loves hard. Um. What are her likes or dislikes? Um, she, uh, loves to pick on her siblings. Uh, she loves her sports. Um, she's um, she loves whatever sport. Her favorite sport is whatever the current one that she is playing. Um, and, she, and she's she's very good at what she does. Um, she loves the sports that her mom loved. Um, she's obviously uh, very close. She's very close with Jen. Um, um, and she loves to ski. She loves to tube. She loves to to water ski and do all the water stuff. And she's she's just she loves to keep up with the other two. Um, so yeah, she she's pretty amazing. Does she? Do you see that she enjoys school? Um, she's she uh, the other two. I think get their smarts from Jen. School comes a little easier for those two. I think Kelsey takes after me a little bit. She struggles in school. It's it's a little it comes a little harder for her. She has to work a little harder, it seems, than the other two. Um, she struggled at Suns Bay. I mean, that was that was a, a really a total mess for Kelsey. Um, but getting her into uh, TCAPs at Eastern, um, she's she's come a long way. Um, How long ago did she switch schools? I don't know. It's it's. I think what year? It, uh, three years ago, three years ago. So it, she's come, she's come a long ways, and she does much better at school. It makes her it makes her nervous. Um, I think sometimes she worries, um, like uh, asking questions, uh, make her nervous. And how do you support her in that? Um, in, in her education, or you know, maybe uh, her. I mean, we, I motivate her. Just to do her best, and uh, I always tell her to never be worried uh, about asking questions. Um, something that she loves to do with me when she's in the car with me is she wants me to ask her math problems, and uh, I mean it just goes on the whole time we're in the car. Uh, she, I, I start out somewhat easier to see where she's at, um, and they just get tougher and tougher, and. Um, I, I love it. Um, I never get tired of it. Um, I, 
I love that she likes that when I make them hard and in uh, that's just something I, I I love to do with her. Um, I'm very, I care very much about how she's doing in school and, and all three of them are doing in school. Um, I like to know what's going on. Um, I've signed permission slips this year. Um, I obviously have become more involved um, this school year. Um, than ever before. Um, and I, I, I've actually loved every minute of it. Um, and not that I wasn't involved before, but I was just doing other things um, that needed to be done with all three. But now I, 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 just, I just love being involved and knowing what's going on and, and what the kids are doing. And I mean, I always knew what they were doing, but it's just different now, I guess. Is it different because you're, you're more like one-on-one? -on -one? Um, yeah, I, yes. Yeah, my week with them, I, I, it's all gun ho on on them, and and I, I make sure they're they're doing their homework and and that they're what, getting done what they need done. Yeah, what types of, I guess, out of school or recreational activities do you think um, Kelsey enjoys the most? Uh, softball, volleyball, basketball. Um, luckily, she stayed away from the hockey thing. Um, softball is probably her favorite. Again, it's it's whatever season we're in. Um, she did soccer for quite a long time. She's been part of a choir for quite a long time. <laughs> she loves to sing too. She didn't do it this year, but um, she's she's very involved in, in a whole bunch of activities. How um, how often do you communicate with Kelsey? I talk to Kelsey every day. I uh, call her before school call her after school I ask her to call her call me before she goes to bed and she does most of the time sometimes it, she falls asleep or, or whatever doesn't work out I understand how it is but I I communicate with them as much as possible um so if you and Kelsey are just hanging out together what what kind of stuff do you guys do um she loves uh the Starbucks she loves not that I take her to Starbucks a lot but um she loves to go get ice cream. She loves to ride bikes. I've taken them on the Boardman Lake Trail. She likes to go to Lululemon. She likes to go to Glicks, uh, just like her big sister. Um, I've taken her to the bookstore to try to get her into the whole reading thing. And she likes to read, but not like, not like, not like Callie. Um, uh, she, you know, I've taken her, I take her on the boat, but uh, whatever she wants to do is what I want to do. What, um, what would you say is her favorite summer activity? Um, probably, I mean, just swimming. Uh, I, she'd swim 24 hours a day if you'd let her. Um, so I take them to the beach or the pool or, it, it, but she plays softball. She loves, she loves the, team, the team, softball team and being part of that team and, and I coach that team. Um, What's her favorite winter activity? Um, she's getting, she, she loves to ski. Um, being that we live in the city, uh, skiing at Hickory is very uh, reasonable. Um, having a membership over there is is uh, very reasonable. So there would be times if uh, Jen had the other two at hockey practice, I would take Kelsey to Hickory and uh, let her ski. Um, if it was a half hour, whether it was four hours, whatever she wanted it to be, um, let her do her thing. Usually we would meet up with a friend or um, that's where that's her happy place in the winter. Um, even one time this past winter, it was it was raining and she was out there and she was the only one on the hill, but they were open. And she uh, got soaked, but she loved every second of it. And she's a wild and crazy girl. What's her favorite subject in school? Um, probably math. Um, and just, I, I would say that because, uh, just because of how much she asked me to do math. Obviously, Jen is a math teacher, so she likes to uh, take after her mom in that sense and loves that that world um she loves the games that they play the activities that they do i actually talked to her this morning and she was excited about family feud 
Um, they were, must have been playing Family Feud today. Um, and she thought that was cool because that's a show that we watched on TV together. And um, so she was excited about that. Yesterday, uh, Mrs. Klusterman testified to a time that she asked you um, if you and Calvin wanted her to pick up, I, I'm guessing it was carry out food, pick up food for the two of you mm -hmm. when she was picking up food for herself and the girls. And she testified that you responded that Calvin could eat at home and he did not deserve it. Do you recall that testimony? I do. Were you suggesting in that response that your child not eat at all? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, in that occasion, Calvin was just uh, kind of acting out, talking, talking back, and I didn't think he deserved to have, I forget what the takeout Jen offered, but I felt like you don't reward them if they're going to disrespect their parents or, or their coaches or whatever the situation was. But no, I would never not have him eat. I just suggested that he eat at home. Um, and, you know, find something there. And he, if if you're going to misbehave, there's got to be some sort of consequence for that behavior. Um, was it that the carry out food or whatever the restaurant was, was a treat? Yeah, I, I feel like it is. I mean, yeah, I, I thought it was. You weren't suggesting that you starve your child. No, absolutely not. I would never starve my children. They, they eat nonstop. I just didn't think he should be rewarded with that takeout meal. I thought he should have to make a sandwich or, I mean, not him make it. We would make it, but. I mean, did you eat at home that day too? Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay. Um, and there was food at home. Oh, yeah, there's there's always food at home. Um, Mrs. Kusterman testified to a time she asked you to um, pack some sandwiches for lunch and you did not. Do you recall that testimony? I, mean, I recall the testimony, yes. Did that happen? Yes. At what What was the reason? Uh, the girls didn't want sandwiches. Uh, they said they weren't going to eat them. Um, so I, I offered up a different suggestion. Whether I, I think the girls love the fruit cups and granola bars. It's, I just let them choose something else. What? Yeah. I'm not going to make them a sandwich if they don't want it. They're just going to throw it away or whatever. So did you did you add to whatever Mrs. Fisherman had already oh, absolutely. that day? Absolutely. I um, gave them options. Okay. There's been other times they've said that, and I've actually taken them to the store on the way to school or whatever, and they pick out a different option. I mean, I try, I try to be reasonable with them. I'm not starving them. Um, let's <laughs> Mrs. Wisterman also testified to a time that she asked you to prepare breakfast and you did not. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. What was going on there that day? I made something that Callie didn't want at the time and that I'm not going to just throw away one thing so she can choose something else. So I said, you eat this so you're not getting anything. I mean, have you had that with, with children? I mean, you have three children. Is there a time when it happens with children that they yeah, it, you it, make something and they don't want it. Yeah, absolutely. Is that pretty normal? That's pretty normal. Um, do you think you should just make unlimited food selections for children? No, I don't. Okay, were you trying to starve your daughter? No, I was not trying to starve her by any means, and she did eat it. It was oatmeal, and so she ended up eating. Anyway. She ended up eating it. Okay. Um, have you ever failed to provide food for your children? No, I. If anything, I probably have too much food for them. I never want them to be, be hungry. If we're going somewhere, I always make sure we have enough food. Um, you heard Mrs. Kusherman's testimony today. The kids come back to her house, quote unquote, starving um, after they've been with you. Does that resonate with you at all? Does that make any sense to you based on what you know about uh, what happens when they're with you? That, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's around dinner time. I mean, this past Sunday, I knew uh, that they were gonna do some meat on the on the smoker when the kids got home. So why would I feed them if I knew when they got to Jen that that's what she was doing? Because you had somebody had told you, or you had knowledge in yes. some way that yes. they had I, a dinner. I knew plate. that they were having dinner when they got home. Okay. So again, you've never starved your children. You've never failed to provide them food. No, no. I mean, Kelvin eats nonstop. Uh, he, we, 
I when they're with me, I make him full. I make him a lunch. He eats a lunch at school, and I make him four extra sandwiches that he eats during the day at school. Four sandwiches. Four sandwiches. In addition to lunch. In addition to lunch, and he has a lunch, and he eats a, the free lunch that he gets provided. I mean, he is a growing boy. Um, he likes to joke about when he walks through the hallway and walks past one of the football coaches. Um, classrooms and say, hey, Glooster, we need another sandwich. And he's always got sandwiches. Um, is Mrs. Glusterman well aware that you provide your children with food? She's she's very aware. So does it, why were we having this conversation about breakfast and sandwiches? Um, honestly, I think this has turned into a game for Jen. I think it's her goal to make me look bad at every opportunity that she has. Um, and it's as simple as that. She she is doing whatever it takes to get the kids as much as she wants. And I mean, in the last couple of years, she's, your testimony was she agreed and sent you off out of town with the kids at times, one of the kids or more of the kids. Was there any concern that you weren't going to provide the children food? No. Did she no. ever say, here's all the food I'm packing for the weekend because I don't trust you to give them food? There would be times that she would pack stuff, but it was just in addition to our meals. It was never, never because she felt I wasn't, you know. Or at least she never, yeah. That's what I yeah, she, she never told I me. Mean, if she packed food, did she pack enough food for the whole weekend? No, it was more like granola bars and apples. And I mean, Kelvin eats nonstop. Like, so it's in addition to. Travel food snacks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like. No, it was never Here's enough food to cover the whole. No, weekend. it was never meals, I and mean, okay. we always ate out with the team, or picked up a sandwich, or whatever. I mean, or went out, for, you know, for breakfast or whatever. Um, you're living separately from Mrs. Kusterman right now. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, when did that start? Uh, April, I think April, April fourteen, maybe. I've heard. What What transpired, or what was? said or discussed I, I'm not really clear on that that caused you to leave the marital home at that Just time Jen and I got into an argument and she told me I needed to go stay at my parents was that a mutual decision no did you really want to go stay at your parents no I, I absolutely did not want to go stay at my parents um why'd you leave then um I left because um the last few years, if Jen uh, gets mad at me, um, she's, she tries to threaten me with what happened in uh, 2019. She will pull her phone out and she says, if you don't leave, I'm going to call the police. And it's not even things that did anything. It's just her way of getting her way. And so I'm uh, I'm I'm scared of her. So when she told me to leave, I just thought, okay, I'll leave for the weekend or whatever, and hopefully things calm down. And uh, I, I didn't go back for a while until I was told I could. How often would she pull out her phone and say, "Hey, I'm going to call the police"? Um. In the last couple of, I mean, in the last year, it's probably happened once or twice. And what was usually going on? Were you, were you doing anything that would warrant police? No, no, not at all. Did she, did she say what she was going to tell the police when she called? Um, no, I never got that far because I think she knew I would leave. It was just an intimidation. <clears throat> did she also... <clears throat> Excuse me. Did she also video or audio record you to your knowledge? Yes. How did that feel living in a home where somebody would record you? Uh, it made me extremely uncomfortable. Um, this this spring, I would only be there when the kids were there. As soon as the kids were in bed, I would leave um, and go for walks, hour hours long walks, and that's. When Jen said she wanted to know when I was coming back into the house, I would never come back until she was sleeping because I felt unsafe. Um, Why'd you feel unsafe? Uh, just, just because I, I, I didn't know what Jen was going to do. 
she she was very good at threatening me um she testified that um i think she used the term walking on eggshells and that's how she felt how did you feel at that time i felt the same way um I mean, it, we we were I, we were pretty civil when the kids were around. I mean, it was it was it was awkward. There's no doubt. Um, but if I went to sleep, I mean, most of the times the girls would sleep with Jen, and I would just sleep in one of their rooms. Um, I got to the point where I was even propping up a broom on the door so that she would knock it over if she was coming in because there were coming there would be times she'd try to come in and start arguments with me. Um, there were times it got so bad that I finally uh, left to sleep in our boat that was at storage. And then I would return early in the morning before the kids woke up, um, stuff like that. Um, and and I kind of want to go back to the back in April when you first, because we kind of mix those timelines up a little bit, but see so you in April, she told you leave or I'm going to call the police. That was your testimony, correct? Yeah, that, that, I mean, that time she didn't tell me that she was going to call the police. She just told me I needed to leave and that I wasn't welcome. And, and I, and I mean, I, I want to get along. So it wasn't like, I wasn't like, okay, I'm just going to go to my parents for the weekend. Let's let this thing calm down. And, and I, so that was the end of April. Um, when did you go back to the house? Um, that was June, maybe June. I don't know exact day. So let's talk about that time. End of April, June. Um, you were living with your parents or yeah. staying at your parents? Yes. Um, were you kicked out of the house? Were you not permitted to come back in? Uh, I was, Jen told me she did not want me staying there. Um, I would go into the house during the day if if no one was there. I would come back when if the kids were around. Um, we I tried to keep things normal with the kids. I still picked up Callie and took her to school. I'd come back and once Jen left, I would uh, go in the house and spend time with Kelsey and get her ready for school and then leave, get her to school, and then I would go to work and I would return. You know when the the kids were around, but I didn't sleep there. I mean, so that time period, Mrs. Swisherman was well aware and consented to you coming to pick up your daughters and take them to school. Oh, absolutely. That was something. Absolutely. I mean, that the, the kids stuff didn't change. Okay. <clears throat> um, we, at that point, we didn't even, we didn't have, well, that was later date, but we didn't follow the FOC you know, we just continue to own things were normal. Well, the we'll get to the temporary order in a minute, but I'm still talking about this this yeah. earlier time period. Um, did you learn at some point that on May 17th, Miss Miss Klusterman filed for divorce? I did. And with that filing, she asked for exclusive use and enjoyment of the home. I, I mean, I learned that later on. But she filed that on the 17th. You just, okay, yes. we'll get to when you learn that. Um, and she asked for that to be ordered ex party, which um, you now understand means without a hearing, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, that was not granted without a hearing. Is that fair? Correct. Um, when did you learn about all this stuff being filed? Uh, not until I was started communicating with you. Um, if the record reflects that you received service on May 31st, would that sound correct that that's when you learned of it? Yes. Um, how did you learn of these filings that she made? Uh, you reached out to her attorney so and, she, you, and you told me. So you were not, she didn't deliver, have these delivered to you by a process server or certified mail or something? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, things started showing up at the house, but I didn't live there, so I didn't receive them. And she knew you weren't at the and house. She knew I didn't live there. Okay. So you think maybe she had stuff mailed to that? You're not sure? I'm not sure. I, okay. I I only ever received a couple of things. One thing, she 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 would send mail over, but I didn't get that till later on. Um. So 
around the end of May, May 31st uh, is what the record shows, you learned and received a copy of Mrs. Flusherman's motion for exclusive use and enjoyment of the home. Correct. Um, and then we had a hearing in front of Judge Hamlin on June 12th. Is that correct? That is correct. In her motion, do you recall her alleging that there was any abuse of herself or the children as a basis for why she should have exclusive use of the home? No. Um, when we got to the hearing, do you recall her alleging that you'd ever abused the children? No. When we got to the hearing, um, did she allege that you'd abused her? No. Um, did she have new allegations at the hearing? She did. That weren't in her motion? Correct. And and that was that there were sexual advances? Correct. Um, and even after hearing that, do you recall that Judge Hamlin ordered that she would not have exclusive use of the home? Yes. Um, and is that when you returned to the home? Um, I don't believe I returned that day. I think it was maybe the next day. But... And when you tried to move back into your marital home that you both jointly had enjoyed at that point or up to, you know, just before then, did she dictate anything to you about your coming and going or being in the home? Uh, yes, she told me I had to enter through the garage door so that she would know when I was coming and going. And she told me that I was to sleep downstairs. Um, and even though, at, do you recall being at the June 12th hearing in front of Judge Hamlin? I mean, yes. And he, did he verbally deny the motion for exclusive use of the home on the record at he, that time? He did. Okay. And do you recall if there was a written order also saying that? I believe so. Do you know when that written order was sent out? Uh, I don't remember the dates, but I'm sure it was right away. If the if the record um, indicates June twentieth, does that sound correct? Okay. It, does that sound familiar to you? Sounds familiar. Okay. Um, is it fair to say, with all that, Mrs. Pusterman filed a motion to get something. She didn't get it. It wasn't granted. She didn't get what she wanted. She didn't get exclusive use of the home. Right. Correct. What happened on June 30th? Uh, what day of the week was that? Uh, okay. Uh, that Friday, June 30th. What happened Friday, June 30th, if anything? Uh, I believe that's the day that her parents showed up. Mm -hmm. Her parents showed up. Was uh, at the marital home. Um, yeah, I mean that that week her parents showed up, and it I, it was very apparent that I was not to be there. Um, what do you mean by that? What was going on? Um, I don't know. They just kind of informed me that her parents were coming to stay at the house, um, and. Um, yeah, I mean, if I have my dates correct, it definitely happened that week. Um, uh, I, that could have been a couple of days. June thirtieth may have been the day that Calvin called me and told me that the police we, were we looking for objection. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can't talk about it. Okay. Calvin called you. Calvin called me, but can't say what he said. Okay. okay? So that week, whether it was Friday, June 30th, or a couple days before, Mrs. Klusterman informed you that her parents were coming. Was that normal? Would she normally just simply have her parents come and inform you? Was that normal during um, the marriage? Not like that. What do you mean, not like that? What was different this time? Um... Well, normally it'd be like, hey, my parents are coming this weekend, or hey, my parents are coming up for the day. Um, and that time it was, my parents are coming to stay at the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they came, her dad was going to change her brakes. And, um, and at that time, I felt very unsafe uh, around her parents. Um, so I called my parents and had them come over just to be eyes. Um, and we stayed outside. Jen's parents stayed inside. Why did you feel unsafe around her parents? 
Um, I felt at this point they were, uh, I don't know, I, I I didn't want a scene. I didn't. Um, prior prior to that, was Mrs. Kusherman's father seen outside of your shop? Yes, he, I have seen him multiple times at my shop watching me. I saw him drive in front of my parents' house one time when I was outside at late at night getting some stuff out of my truck. Um, and multiple times outside of my shop. And that that week, whether it was June 30th or a couple of days before, um, were you asked if it was okay for people to stay at your home? No. You were told? I was told. Okay. Did you make a decision then to just leave the situation? I did. I did. Okay. Um, I mean, that when the day that her parents showed up, I mean, I tried to be nice. We it got along. It just was, it was really awkward. Um, it just seemed... Like they were trying to push push me out, I guess. Um, and Mrs. Wizardman had made it clear within a couple of weeks prior to that she really didn't want you there. She filed a motion and right, whatnot. Okay, right. No, I definitely felt like a guest and felt unwelcome. And that's your own home. That's my own home. Um, it was our home. Yeah, I mean, it was your family home, yeah. right? Um, did something happen Sunday morning? Uh, Sunday morning, um, just because I felt like it was unsafe to July 2nd, well, July 2nd, Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday morning. That was the day. Um, so the Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, they air show. Jen was at the kids that Saturday. Sunday morning, I was set to have the kids at 9 a.m. My parenting time was set to start at 9 a.m. Um, I, just because of the events earlier in the week, I'm like, this does, it just doesn't make any sense for me to go over there. Um, so I sent my mom and my sister, um, and not too long after they went over there, uh, I got a call from the police saying they needed me to sign some paperwork. And so they came to my parents' house and that's when I found out that Jen had put a PPO on me. And, um, the date? that that PPO was requested and issued? Was that Friday, that June 30th? Friday, June 30th. Okay. And, I, and later, and that's, I realized that weekend multiple times why Jen's dad was following me. And- Well, we don't know why he was following well, okay. but he was okay. following he was, he was following me that okay. week. That weekend, it was, uh, it was quite evident. Okay. Um, so he was following you on Friday and Saturday? Yes. So after the PPO was issued, before you had been served, yes, you saw him multiple times. I saw times. him multiple times. Where where did you see him? I was. Your Honor, I'm going to object to relevancy. This line of questioning has gone on quite a long time, but I'm not sure how it relates to the child or children, the grandpa seeing the defendant about town. Grandpa stalking you, my client, is relevant to the overall family relationship, threats, intimidation, and really is quite relevant to the issue of him being denied parenting time that we're getting to. Um, well, didn't we also, didn't you ask him about this? This is the person who testified, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. So Ms. Lentz, I believe you asked him these exact questions as to whether he did these things. Okay. So I'm not sure I could say it's I mean, he's got a right to respond to that. I understand. This is all unclear. I, I assume that's the, the, the person who testified was Mr. DeVries. <laughs> Correct. Yes, that's who we're talking about. Okay, then overruled. Thank you. Um, sir, where did you see Mrs. Klusterman's father, Mr. DeVries? Um, well, my dad's shop is over on Lake Avenue, which is uh, over by Oriana. Um, I was on 10th Street turning left onto Lake again, and I saw him right at that intersection. I pulled into our shop. This was like at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, and uh, it, it was absolutely him. I pulled into our shop, stood by my truck a minute, and he drove from the uh, down Lake 
uh, Avenue. It went really slow. A couple minutes later, he came back the other way. And then a few minutes later, I saw him pull onto 11th Street, which looks right into our property. And he said he was sitting right there watching me. For how long? Um, probably 20 minutes. Okay. Um, going back to the PPO, when you received it, did it direct you that you could not be at the residence of Mrs. Klusterman, correct, which would be the marital home, correct, the same marital home she had asked for exclusive use of and was denied by Judge Hamlin. Yes. Did you notice that the PPO was signed by Judge Hamlin or a different judge? Signed by Judge Elsenheimer. By Judge Elsenheimer, and it was dated ten days after Judge Hamlin issued an order directing otherwise. Correct. Okay. Um, now you were due, you were due to get parenting time that weekend, Sunday, Correct. the second. Correct. We were, that we were, uh, special scheduling for cherry festival. Each one of us were set to get a air show day. Jen had Saturday. I was to get Sunday just because of the tension of things. At that point, I didn't know about the PPO. I sent my mother and my sister to go pick up the kids. Um, and Jen did not open the door and give them the kids. And they then, returned back to you with well, no children. They returned back to no children. Um, just as the police showed up to the house and we figured out that we had a PPO, my dad called my mom and said, you might as well come back. Um, and you had a special parenting time scheduled for Cherry Festival, 4th of July. Yes, we did. Cherry Festival air show specifically. Why is that? Uh, Cherry Festival is a huge thing for our family. Uh, we love the air show. Um, we love the 4th of July. We love everything about the festival, the, the busyness, the rides. Our, our whole family does so much together that week. Um, I have an aunt and uncle that live right on the base of the peninsula, and when the jets fly, it's, I mean, it's right over the house. Um, there's not a better place to watch it, and that's where we want to be, and they have a pool, and uh, we usually spend the air show days there, maybe one day on the boat. We always, every single year, we spend the 4th of July there. Um, we love to do all the cherry festival events as, as much as as much as we can that week. Um, but and and the special provisions that were in that temporary order was that something you discussed with your friend in the court caseworker because yes. th these are special events. Correct. Um, if I remember correctly, it was Jen's idea to split the week. Okay. Um, and and prior to this temporary order. Um, was Mrs. Kusterman having conversations with you about wanting to also attend these family events with you? Yes, she uh, wanted to attend the events. The air show at your aunt and uncle's house? Yes, she didn't understand why she wasn't invited. Did, did you tell her you're not invited? I told her she was not invited. Okay. Was, how did she react to that? Uh, she was very unhappy with that. Okay. Um, she didn't understand why she wouldn't be invited. At that time, divorce proceedings had already begun. Yeah, they had already begun, okay. yes. Um, and there was a lot of tension in the family at that there point. There was a lot is of that tension. Fair to say? Yes, okay. there was a lot of tension. Um, did you get the kids for the air show on Sunday the 2nd? I did not. Um, did you get the kids for your for the court-ordered half of Cherry Fest week that you were supposed to get? I did not. Did you get the kids for the 4th of July holiday? I did not. Um, when you were served a copy of the PPO, that was Sunday, July 2nd, um, did it indicate communication only through our family wizard? Can you repeat that? Did the PPO order indicate that you could only have communication with Mrs. Klusterman through our family wizard? Um, I think it did, but I didn't know what it was. No idea what. Our no family, idea. No idea. Did it come with any instructions that said, "Here's what our family wizard is, and here's how you use it, and right. what you do with it"? Right. I didn't have any idea what it was. And since it was Sunday, July second, and the Fourth of July holiday was Tuesday, 
did you need to confer with your attorney myself to understand what that order meant? Yes, I didn't want to do anything that I wasn't allowed to do. And I didn't know what that was. So I waited until Wednesday when I could communicate with you. And uh, I mean, does it, did it have any effect on you that police are handing you a piece of paper that is restricting your rights? Yes, absolutely. Does that, you know, make you fearful of doing anything? That made me very fearful. Okay. Um, as soon as you were able to talk to me on Wednesday, were you able to uh, get on our family wizard and communicate with Mrs. Cushman? I was. Okay. Um, so that was the, that sort of confusion was resolved rather quickly as soon as business hours open. Correctly. Um, when was the last time you missed an air show with your kids? I have never missed an air show with my kids until this year. How about a 4th of July? Never. How about Cherry Fest? Never. I, that, that, um, I will say that that Saturday, the end Saturday of Cherry Festival, she did offer them up to me. Mm -hmm. But again, it was when a time I didn't know what I could do if I was violating something by off taking the kids. So I said no, because I didn't have a way of communicating with you. She didn't offer that until Saturday. She did not offer that until Saturday. Um, and it wasn't as part of the custody order, right? Right. And my family and I decided that was in my best interest to say no, because I didn't know what the rules were. Um, Uh, did the personal protective order restrict you from removing minor children um, from the petitioner except as allowed by a custody or parenting time order? Yes, that's what I was told. Um, that's what it says, that's right? That's what it says, yeah. Okay. Um, and therefore, that Saturday, pursuant to the front of the court temporary order, in this case, wasn't your parenting order. Correct. Um, and you were concerned that... I would be violating it. Okay. Um, and it wasn't, again, it wasn't until the last Saturday of Cherry Festival right. week that right. she even offered you any sort of makeup time for the last air show for the July or the first half right. of Cherry Festival. Yeah. Correct. And, and I would like to add that she, not only did she keep the kids from me that week, she sent me a message on the wizard asking if I would give her some money for the money that she had spent at the rides down at Cherry Festival. Um, did you... You contested the PPO, right? Yes. Okay. And um, we had a hearing schedule and lined up on that. Correct. On September 5th, uh, did you and Mrs. Klusterman through legal counsel and to enter into a stipulation um, that was approved by the court on September 5th um, that dismissed the PPO? Yes. And that was, Mrs. Klusterman agreed to that? Correct. Okay. So the PPO is no longer an issue. As of September 5th, fair Correct. to say? Correct. Okay. Um, how did the PPO affect sort of your parenting time or how you conducted yourself with your children um, from the time of really July 2nd when you were served to September 5th when it was formally dismissed? It, it, made, it, it made it very hard. I was scared to go places with them because I didn't know where, where, where Jen would be. I coached Kelsey's softball game um I coached her softball team I had to miss the last three games of the season because she insisted on going and I was under your no. uh, <laughs> you make your own decision well, so tell me what happened <laughs> I, I was advised to not attend any event that Jen would be at so I did not uh, uh did not go to those softball games um Kelvin had like summer football I did not attend that um, I, I, I didn't attend anything that it would be possible that Jen would be at. You knew, however, that the PPO didn't restrict you from going there or being in a public space, right? I, 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 I was made aware of that and I just didn't, I just didn't, I don't, I don't trust her. Why don't you trust her? Uh, I think she would have benefited a lot if she would have been able to put me in jail from violating that order. Um, are you now aware that she also went to the police and attempted to 
get you criminally charged as well in that time period? Um, I am aware of that now. I was not made aware of that until um, the day that I met with uh, you and CBS. Um, and we did Freedom of Information Act and we got some records, right? So Correct. that's how you, no, no criminal charges were ever made. No criminal charges. Um, but did that give you concern as to if you appeared in Mrs. Kusterman's eyesight, what she could do with a PPO in place or what she could allege or anything. Yes. And and, and so were you fearful at that point I, of I was very I was very afraid. And did it affect your freedom really to conduct yourself with respect to your children in the same manner you always had? It affected big time. And it affected the kids because I, I wasn't able to go to their stuff. I, I did. I finally, I finally went to a football game with my family, but I didn't go to a single volleyball game. I, I was, I was scared. But it's one thing for her to come after me, but that that affected the kids. She hurt the kids. The kids were the ones that paid the price. Um, after, and I apologize, I'm kind of going back and forth in the time frame, but um, so after Cherry Fest week and after you were served with the PPO, pursuant to the temporary order, when, when were you expecting to get the kids next? Um, I, I forget the exact schedule. It was almost three weeks in between the times that I had seen the kids. Um, was Cherry Fest week? That was supposed to be split, correct? Yeah, that was supposed to be split. And, and then the following week, Mrs. Klusterman claimed was her week. It was her week, yes. Uh, how did, I guess, you were living in the home until, what, Friday, June 30th, how did, she, which was, you know, the Friday of Cherry Fest, how did how did she come to the conclusion, or do you know, did you guys have a discussion that that was her week, the next week after Cherry Fest? Um, no, it wasn't until Cherry Festival communication on the wizard that she told me that was her week. That was not something you necessarily agreed to as far as starting the week on, week off rotation? No. Um, so she took that very next, so she had the kids all of Cherry Fest week? Yeah, she, I believe she had them three weeks in a row. And then she had them the next week. Yes. And so it, the next time you were due to see them, when was that? Uh, maybe the second or third week of July. Um, your exchanges are on Sundays? Oh, yeah, Sundays. Yeah. Um, so would that, I guess, be Sunday, July 16th? Correct. Okay. Did you get the kids that week? I did. Okay. And then the next week was her week? Correct. And then... The next Sunday. When was that? Um, that Friday. Um, well, no, I'm just asking you, were you due to get the kids on Sunday, July 30th? Yes. Okay. Um, so did something happen on Friday, I guess, July 28th? Yes, I got a call from Kelvin. Um, without telling me what he said, did you do something in response to getting that communication from him? I called you. Um, and I called, I was able to get a hold of you just before five o'clock. Um, did you also receive a call from somebody else that day? I got a call from CPS. I uh, called you first, but then I got a call from them. And then. What happened on Sunday when you were supposed to get the kids? Um, our pickup was always at Faith Reformed Church. Um, I showed up at six o'clock um, and Jen did not show up with the kids. When did you get the kids eventually? I got them Tuesday night of the next week. Um, so from the time that you left the marital home around Friday, June 28th, um, how many parenting time weeks were interfered with 
um, in all of Carousel School. And I did have one normal week, and then she interfered with the next week. Um, we now know through uh, Mrs. Kusherman's testimony yesterday that that child protective services investigation related to some allegations that Ms. Klusterman is still making that you're exhibiting grooming behaviors with respect to sexual abuse of your children. What's your response to that? I would never do anything to harm even any of them. My children. I would never do anything to harm my my daughters. My my kids are my world. I I just couldn't believe that she did that to me. And she accused me of that. She absolutely knows that that's false. How did it feel when you had to hear those allegations from a CPS caseworker? It was heartbroken. My, my, I have nothing without my kids. They are everything to me. And to hear that I was being accused of that, it's just, I just couldn't believe it. How did it feel yesterday to hear Mrs. Kusterman make the same allegation again? <laughs> Nothing surprises me anymore with Jen. She's going to do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Before yesterday, did you and her both know that CPS closed the case and didn't find any any preponderance of evidence of any of those allegations? Very aware. Um, we have the CPS report. You've read it, right? Yes. It was sent to her attorney long before yesterday. Yes? Yes. And she still made that allegation yesterday, huh? Yes. Any truth to that at all? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Would you say that was the second time in six weeks, three parenting time visits, that Mrs. Kusterman did something to interfere and deny your parenting time? Yes. During the term of separation, um, before that temporary order was issued, how often were you seeing the kids? Every day. And this is something that Mrs. Swisherman agreed with? Yes. Were you seeing the kids without her around? Yes. And that's something she agreed with? Yes, absolutely. Um, and here we are, not even a couple months later, and she's sitting here saying that you've been abusing these kids since they were eight and nine years old for the last five, six, seven, eight years. Did she ever give you any indication in all that time you can't be alone with these kids? No, never. In fact, even as recently as April, May, no court order, she's having you alone with the kids. Right. Last winter, she had you traveling with the kids yeah, by yourself. Correct. I traveled with the, with the daughters without Jan. Never anything. Even in Mrs. Gushman's trial brief that is dated July 11th, did she make any such allegations in there about physical abuse of the children, uh, sexual grooming behaviors, anything like that? No. No, no accusations at all until None. CPS and then even, even talking to CPS, was there any allegations of physical abuse of the children? No. Yeah, yesterday she testified to it for the first time in any of these proceedings. Is that that is correct? Um, I have quite a bit more. I don't know if we can take a five minute break. Sure, just give me a second. Yeah, let me. I'll finish my note in a second. Um, yeah, 